and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. We're going to go ahead and get started on some supper. I'm going to make a chicken dish that's really good. And if you like garlic like we do, this is fantastic. I've just got about a pound and a half of chicken breast here. In fact, these were a couple of small packages of uh, chicken tenders is what it was. But you can just use uh, just regular sized chicken breast deboned. And uh, I'm going to be using several different ingredients. Now, Miss <laughs> Miss Lori made this recipe up just because I had all these different ingredients, and it's just so good. I'm going to be using something store bought here, though. This is a, a chicken wing uh, sauce, but it's Parmesan garlic sauce, and I got this over there where you'd buy all the different sauces. Um, for your chicken wings and that's where this is found I think it's called buffalo wild buffalo sauce or something you can see the buffalo on front of it but there's all different kinds of sauces and this parmesan garlic is really delicious and makes chicken breast taste so good and of course chicken wings too so I'm going to be using some of this sauce I'm going to be using some cream cheese some butter uh, some parmesan uh, even some more garlic, salt and pepper, and uh, we're going to stick it in the oven, and it's not going to take very long for it to cook, because these are pretty thin uh, chicken pieces. Now, if you have thicker uh, chicken breasts, it's going to take just a little bit longer, but you can use either the thin ones or the thicker ones, whichever, and you can do this with boneless chicken thighs, too, so either way would be delicious. I'm just going to take some some pepper and some salt just a little bit of salt this is a flaked sea salt and it doesn't take as much but I do love cooking with flaked sea salt I'm gonna take a good tablespoon of minced garlic and I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it around spread it around a little bit now this is really flavored with quite a bit of garlic, but garlic is good for you for one thing, but it, it just has such good flavors. We'll make some mashed potatoes to go with it, and uh, I may look for some broccoli, maybe cook some broccoli to go with it. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of butter. This is salted butter. You can use unsalted. That's got a little bit of toast crumbs in it. <laughs> I'm just kind of dot, dot the butter around. I'm going to say just about three tablespoons of softened butter. If you want to melt the butter and then cool it off and then just kind of pour it over your chicken, That'll work good, too. You know, sometimes you just have to go to your pantries and just start pulling things out. And as it comes together, you think, you know, that would be good on chicken or that would be good on pork chops or, you know, and that would go good together with that. And before you know it, you have got a wonderful recipe going, your own recipe <laughs> that tastes wonderful. I know a lot of people that don't even use recipes. 
They say they don't like looking at them. They don't like reading them. They just want to go in there and cook and do their own thing. I think that's wonderful, too. I'm going to take about four ounces of cream cheese. And my washer's going off telling me that it's done washing. I'm just going to take my cream cheese. I'm going to dot it, too. I've been getting out a lot here the last couple of days. It has been so beautiful outside. Um, my last video, I was telling y'all that my daughter had neck surgery. She had a pretty good sized cyst taken off. And when they went in there, they, they seen that it was attached to several more places than what they thought. And it, it's taken her a little while kindly to recuperate from that surgery. But she is doing better. Of course, we're still in school, so, you know, it's just all them busy things. So we got our cream cheese on top of that. Now I'm going to take my uh, wing sauce, which is called Parmesan, Parmesan garlic. And I will put the name of this down with the recipe down in my information box below my videos. And so you can get this at Walmart. Um, I think you can get it on Amazon. I'm not sure where all the different places you can get it. But even if you can't get this brand, I'm sure you can get a different brand of Parmesan garlic sauce somewhere. And I'm just going to take it and pour it over my chicken. You don't have to use the whole bottle. I think half of the bottle is plenty. And really and truly, I've probably done this backwards. You need to smear the dressing on or the sauce on and then do your cream cheese. But it's going to work either way. Oh, it smells good. And this uh, Parmesan sauce has different... Uh, kinds of spices and seasonings in it. Of course, I don't have my glasses on. But even at this point, if you wanted to, you could add some extra um, basil. In fact, I've got some from the garden that I've been drying. You can put you a little bit of Italian seasoning. I've got some of this, I went and got some of my purple basil that um, came out of the garden just uh, probably about a week ago. And I just, I just kind of hang my, my herbs around the kitchen and let them dry. Not overpowering, but it just makes dishes, especially sauces, taste so good. And basil just goes really good with chicken dishes. So there's a little bit of basil. So I've got just a little over half a bottle of this. And I just really think that now if, if my chicken pieces would have been thicker, bigger chicken pieces, I would have probably used this whole bottle. But since they're not, I don't need it. This is 12 full ounces is what that is. So all we got to do now is I'm going to take some Parmesan cheese and put some of that on top. Now you could serve this with um, pasta. I guess you could serve it maybe with some kind of wild rice or something like that. Mr. Brown is a potato man, so I'm going to make him some mashed potatoes. And I'm going to cook me some broccoli to go with it. So I'm going to put this in a 375 oven. And I'm going to let it cook. And I'm going to let it, I'm going to check it in about 20 minutes and see where we're at. Like I said, these are thin pieces, so it's not going to take very long. So it's going to be different on the size of your pieces of meat. 
if you if you're using boneless thighs it's going to take a different time too but if you're used to cooking and baking chicken you'll know you can check the temp in it and you'll know if it's ready or not so let's get this in the oven and we'll start peeling potatoes to make some mashed potatoes When I cook potatoes for mashed potatoes, I always cook up a bunch. And then what we don't eat, I divide up into Ziploc bags and I freeze them. That way when I come into work during the weekdays, if there's a recipe or just something that we're having that night that I need mashed potatoes, all I have to do is the night before is take them out and put them in the refrigerator and they thaw out. Now if I forget about them I just uh, take them out of the baggie and put them in the in the microwave for just a little bit. They'll thaw out pretty quick. I do rice that way too. I don't just make a little bit of rice. I make enough rice to put in baggies flatten them out and then I'll just stack them in my freezer. Anything like that just to help me out. Mr. Brown and I, we just like regular old mashed potatoes. We don't like a lot of different things put in them. Sometimes when I'm boiling them, I'll throw some minced garlic in there with them. But since we're having so much garlic on our chicken, I'm not going to do that tonight. So all that I use is salt and pepper, butter, and uh, warm milk. Just simple old-fashioned mashed potatoes.
while we've been watering all the plants, my potatoes got good and tender. So I drained them. And now we're just going to put a little bit of pepper. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. And I'll season this to your taste. I'm going to put a whole stick of softened butter. And I warmed up some milk. But first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mash my potatoes with the butter get them started with my hand masher I just soon do it just like this I don't I don't get out my electric mix or anything I'm gonna put just a little bit more pepper it don't take long to to mash it by hand but if you want to get your electric mixer out you can I've got some warm milk I usually uh, warm up at least a cup. You never know how much it's going to take. It just depends on how many potatoes you cooked. And I just continue to mash them and pour a little bit more milk in it till it gets to the creamy consistency that we like. My kids and my grandkids love my homemade mashed potatoes. I'm going to pour just a bit more milk in there. And I'll go ahead and taste it too and see if I need a little bit more salt in it. We just like our mashed potatoes, just simple. Nothing fancy. No extra ingredients. And they're getting there. They're getting to that right creamy consistency that we like. I'm going to add just a little bit more warm milk. Now some people like to add sour cream or cream cheese to their mashed potatoes, but we just we just don't care for that. But we do like our mashed potatoes really creamy, that's for sure. And they're pretty much there. Creamy, buttery mashed potatoes. It's just about right. Our chicken's done after 30 minutes. And let me tell you something. This stuff is delicious. Y'all have got to try this recipe. This has become one of my favorites. That certain Parmesan garlic sauce is the bomb. It is really good stuff. Plus adding all your other ingredients. So these are red rippers. Are they cream rippers no. or are they just red rippers? Red ripper peas. Peas that Miss Tina give us. They're coming up. And this is what this looks like. I think it's gonna make some good dirt eventually. That is. Old, old sawdust with a few leaves mixed. Old, very old sawdust and twenty leaf, at least twenty years old. And leaf mulch. I mean it's got moisture down in there deep. Look at them look at that worm. Yeah, you'll find a bunch of them in there. I just dug up that worm. Is he dead? Might cut him in half. <laughs> that part of him will make it. They're in there working and that's good. Um yeah, I think your peas are coming on up because all the way down through here. And there's the green peas. All the way down through there. I think I did all except we're at the very end of that row and there's some of them coming up down there. These are your red, red ripper peas. A lot of y'all probably know exactly what we're talking about. 
our friend Tina Simpson was at her house getting milk one day and she gave Danny a bunch of peas. To pull them off. They were dry. They were dry. So they're planted all the way down through there. And then there's some planted up here. And then up here are our green peas. They come up. Y'all see me planting these on my hands and knees. And we got Bermuda grass coming up. And we got Bermuda grass coming up. I despise it. We can grow good Bermuda grass around here. And then on the other side, I planted some Cherokee purple tomato seeds. Some of them come up, and it looks like he's got some planted down on the other side of this fence row. That's his favorite tomato. So there's green, green peas and tomatoes. And there's red zipper peas. Is it zipper or ripper? Ripper, I mean. <laughs> now there are zipper peas, so you call them what you want. Ripper. Red rippers. This is going to be future squash and okra. Squash and okra down through here. We don't get in a big hurry really planting squash and okra because they like very hot, dry weather. And let me tell you, I've never seen gnats any worse than they are right now. <laughs> We're going to have to put just, some peppermint oil on your earlobes. <laughs> just cover, covering my face. Yeah, it makes it kind of miserable out here. I've been that way for this is the third day at least. So, Mr. Brown's garden is looking pretty good. Things are coming up. He's still got a few things to plant out here, but between the potatoes, the grass is growing. The grass is growing. His ripper peas, <laughs> his green peas, his tomatoes. And we, I put up fence. I got. Yeah, he's put up. I put up to keep the rabbits out. Fence to keep the rabbits out and the armadillos. The armadillos got in here last year and dug up every one of my squash and zucchini plants that were planted down through there. Pretty plants, too. Big, pretty plants. And he got in here and dug them plumb from the... Rooted them up like a hog. Yeah, like a hog, looking for grubs. So anyways, we got pretty decent fence around here now. Maybe keep them out. Don't keep the squirrels, but it'll keep the rabbits, hopefully. Well, I ordered me a couple of hood owls. <laughs> I don't know if they'll keep squirrels out. They will keep rabbits out. You give these red ripper peas another week with sunshine and good weather, they're really going to grow. I hope they do. And that grass being there no drives you crazy, but it really don't hurt anything because it's helping keep nutrients and moisture in that ground. When you rip all that out, just like the desert, you lose moisture and you use, lose nutrients. I just don't like it he just don't like it. Not that he can't keep it out That's why a lot of people do no-till. Because any ground that you just wipe out and just, just dirt and sun all day long, on that bare dirt, it sucks the nutrients and moisture out of it. Even though we don't like grass in here, but year four last, I grew quite a few uh, Long Island cheese pumpkins in here, and the grass was about ankle deep, and they thrived in that. They absolutely thrived in that grass. And like Mr. Brown said, that sawdust is at least 20 years old. You can't use, go and get one, two year old, even five year old probably sawdust, right? Yeah, you can't. It takes sawdust, especially if it's very deep. It takes a long time to ever, because it goes through the heat for years. 
you can take an old sawdust pile that's been there for years and go out there in the winter time and dig it open and it'll just steam or roll out of it. It goes, takes it a long time to settle down. Now you could put it in smaller piles and it wouldn't take as long. This is one of my little raised beds that's back in the, what I call the kitchen garden. And I like to add a little bit of yellow accent flowers to a lot of my beds. This bed has lavender. It has some dusty miller. It has some leeks. It has a few herbs. And it'll grow. Everything in here will grow and it'll fill the the bed up and look really pretty. But this is where I like to be most of the time. Never in a hurry. Just taking my time, enjoying myself, getting my hands in the dirt. And we're just starting out. Everything's new. And this is my cabbage and what I'm going to do is I'm fixing a I'm going to fertilize them and then I'm going to put some uh, mulch around them some straw that I bought here's a couple of cabbages and these raised beds and back there of course is my green peas y'all seen them a hundred times I think <laughs> but they just keep it growing They should start blooming here pretty soon. And this right here is a young muscadine vine. That little chicken house pen back there is just where we keep new, new uh, young chickens when we get them before we put them in the hen house. This down here is, uh, I threw some spinach seeds in there and they're coming up. I planted some garlic and some different things in there. If you make your trellis, then peas, they'll find a way. They'll, them little tendrils will just catch on and just hold on and just keep a climbing. I really hope they start blooming pretty soon, too. Back there are some uh, irises and my fig tree that I think got bit pretty hard back in the, oh, probably about February. We had a cold snap, I think. Anyways, I still got a lot of work to do, but I got a lot planted out. And uh, like I said, I'm going to mulch all this cabbage. First, I'm going to fertilize it and then mulch it good. I want to show y'all something that I bought from Amazon. And these are just little, uh, what I call watering trays. And the tomatoes that I've got planted in there in the middle, those are my Rutgers. That's just an old, um, um, an old type of tomato that we have always grown here in Arkansas. But what it is, is um, you just pour your water in there. It's called a uh, watering tray. Anyways, there's holes in there. And you'll fill this up with water. Of course, when the plant gets bigger, the, the roots are going are gonna to go out and expand. And you can even put your fertilizer in that. And you just fill the 
the reservoir up and it will just uh, slowly water your tomatoes. So I'm going to try it out. They are in my Amazon store. Um, you can check them out. And right here are my French breakfast radishes. And there's a bunch of them in there. Along with some spearmint and uh, some kale and some carrots that come up. Some more of my mm -hmm. mint. And over here is a, a newer bed and it's got rosemary and it's got uh, broccoli rob. Um, it's got a couple of different broccolis in there. I've got some patio tomatoes at the end. So it's mostly brassicas. And I'm going to uh, give them a little bit of fertilizer here in a minute too. And I'm going to mulch those and put a little bit of straw. And these are my red sweet bell peppers in between the two beds. And of course, y'all have seen this bed already. This has got a bunch of brassicas. It's got cauliflower. It's got broccoli. It has lettuces. And it's got dill and thyme and oregano. It's got some onions planted at the end. It's got marigolds planted all the way around. Are they still under the house? And let's take a little walk through my little garden here. That's not blooming yet, but it's really... Everything's coming up. All these irises. Now some of them are starting to starting to bloom. You can see how thick they are in there. That watering trough back there, I planted a bunch of flower seeds in and they're starting to come up. I've planted a bunch of sunflowers in there and I sure hope they come on up. This was the, uh, the little garden I planted for my friend um, that passed away from Australia. And I've been trying to keep up with it. Her name was Adele. I still got uh, a bunch of perennials that should be coming up and blooming. Give them another month or so. I do want to plant some more perennials out here. I love hostas. My little bridge has got little violets growing up, wild violets growing up in between the, the cracks. My little fisherman boy. But the irises just keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker. I'm going to have to, I guess, start digging some up. But Dude, what, the mosquitoes are I just hate to mess with them, tell you the truth. They look so pretty when they really all start blooming. This right here is at my side door. I want to show y'all something. We're going to go around the side of the house. And I want to show y'all my lights. I wanted to show y'all my lights in front of the house. Let's see how cute they are. Looks like little lightning bugs or little fairies flying around. Solar. I got them on Amazon. They're in my Amazon store. You get two to a box. I just love them. They really light the place up and look really good at night. Back there in them little troughs is where my elephant ears, my big elephant ears will come up. And those lights will look really good around them elephant ears. The depression years were years of starting over. Moving 
to search for work, changing careers, signing up for government work programs. Despite their struggles, few regret the choices they made. My Uncle Bill and Aunt Grace moved in with us sometime in 1934 or 1935. I am not sure just when, because during the Depression years, we also were a, a hostel for Aunt Martha, Uncle Wadsworth, and assorted other relatives. Not all at once, but one bunch moved out, another one in on their heels, moved in on their heels. They were, they were all with us for one simple reason, no work. And if you didn't have work, you couldn't pay the rent. And if you couldn't pay the rent, you looked for relatives who would take you in. Uncle Bill had come to the United States from Germany sometime after World War I. He had spor sporadically attended art school in Chicago before marrying my mother, sister, Grace. Even in the best of times, employment as an artist can be a dicey thing. During the Depression years, it was hopeless. So finally, they moved in with us. The major employer in our little northern Illinois town was a steel mill. Certainly an oddity for what was mostly a farming community. If there was work to be found, the best bet was at the mill. So for that for more than a year, Uncle Bill got up early every morning, walked three miles into town, and joined a near endless line of men, all hoping for employment. Now repeat this picture in every town and city of any size across America, and you have some idea of what the Great Depression was all about. Day after day, you stood in line, hoping someone would open the door and announced that two or three jobs were available. The lucky ones at the front would rush inside and the hundreds of other heads down and shoulders bent would start the slow walk home again. There was no unemployment benefits and no unemployment offices. Going on welfare was dreaded more than going hungry and it was a large step below working for the WPA. <clears throat> Just in case you weren't there, the WPA was Works Progress Administration, one of the alphabet soup agencies created by Roosevelt Administration to provide jobs. Like most such programs, the WPA came in for much scornful criticism. WPA workers were called shovel leaners, and the agency's initials were said to, to mean we putter around. But at least the needy did useful things in return for some substance money. There was another problem. When we have lots of people competing for working conditions, when we have lots of people competing for very few jobs and the employer in the driver's seat as far as hours, wages and working conditions are concerned. So those fortunate enough to have jobs worked long hours for low wages, often under miserable conditions. Assembly lines were sped up and with accelerated again and again. On the job, accident rates soared. An acquaintance tells of complaining about the speed ups to his foreman in the auto plant where he worked. The foreman led him over to a window, pointed down to 2,000 men standing in line waiting for a job and said, if you don't want to work, any one of these men will gladly take your place. In case you ever wondered about what fueled the union movement with its strikes and sit-ins and violence, there was as good an answer as any. Yes, it was a different time. People didn't want handouts. They wanted to work. To be unable to support your family was an ultimate indignity. We've been through recessions and economical downturns many times since, but there's been a difference. These days we turn for help to the government. There were no safe, there were no safety nets during the great depression. So we turned to our families and mostly the door was always open. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and I hope y'all enjoyed Paul's reading of the Great Depression again. 
and we plan on doing a lot more too. Uh, maybe that can be one of our Friday, one of our Friday things of maybe doing a reading. Not even just about the Great Depression, but just we've got so many books and stuff to share with y'all, and I know y'all like that, so that might be kind of fun too. Um, We've been getting a lot of gifts and stuff in the mail. We want to thank y'all a lot for that. We've been getting homemade gifts. A lot of work has went into. We've been getting photos and pictures and uh, stuff for the kitchen. And Danny got a new coffee cup. And we have met several new channels, too, um, that uh, I think that I'll put a link to some of their channels, too down below in my information box, and I want y'all to go check these channels out. These are some very kind folks, and uh, um, I just want to share them with y'all. So, we have been busy this week, and I hadn't had a video put out, so I kind of made this one a little bit long, <laughs> because we love spending time with y'all. But uh, we've just been working and, and taking care of people, and... Uh, trying to do some gardening and we got a lot of the garden in we don't like much i think all we like is maybe a little okra and just a few things like that and uh so we about got it done and we're supposed to be getting some rain and i hope we get some rain on the garden this weekend i hope we don't get no more storms that's for sure so if y'all haven't subscribed please subscribe to our channel hit that them thumbs up give us a like a lot of people have been saying, Miss Lori, when I hit that like button, it's not it's not showing that we liked you. <laughs> well, it really does, because me and Mr. Brown can see it, and YouTube can see it. And uh, I think it's just something that, uh, that we just kind of keep kind of private, you know, just certain things like that. And that's just one of the things we like to keep private. But please hit that that like button, because that's what really helps us. And we appreciate it. And like I said, we see every one of them. And to y'all that clicked on that super thanks and um, have uh, just helped us with your blessings of giving, it does help our channel so that we can be here just a little bit longer with y'all and keep this going as long as we can. And we want to be here a while with y'all. So we appreciate that. So we'll be back in a couple of days. Not sure what we'll be doing. But we'll be doing something. We'll be, we will be doing something, I guarantee you. Be sure and hit the uh, notification bell. Oh, right. yeah. Um, I'm afraid that some of y'all that's been subscribed to us for a while are not getting the notifications. So go back to the homepage, Whip World Holler, and uh, just make sure you're still subscribed. And, and hit that notification bell. And make sure you hit the notification bell that says all, that you get all the notifications. And like I said, if you haven't subscribed, just go to our homepage and subscribe. It doesn't it doesn't cost nothing, and it gives you uh, supposedly supposed to tell you any time we put a video up. So we'll see y'all, and y'all have a beautiful, blessed weekend. Y'all be careful, and we love y'all very much.